I would like to begin by reading this message. After a few days, things bad will be happen in Manus. I am one of those person, I want to kill myself. I don't like myself anymore. I am so unlucky, I am sure that God doesn't like me. Mum, why did you let me born in this injustice world? Why, why, why? I left my country, my lovely sister, my gorgeous parents. The people from government are watching my family all of the time. How can I show my face to my mum? How can I tell them, Mum, sorry Australian government made me old. Sorry I cannot help you from Australia. For how much they killed Reza Bharati? How much is the human price? Maybe I should ask Scott Morrison, he knows, because he killed two very nice boys. Maybe they will pour mo pay more money to kill all of us, because people of Australia, they pay tax to torture innocent people. 900 innocent people are here, more than 18 months. When I was a kid, I was thinking, Australia, they are good people. But no, it's wrong, because they spend for killing people. I'm at the end of my rope, I lost my health, I lost my hope, and I don't have any safe place to go back to my land. If I die here, who will be responsible for me? Australia, PNG, who? How can my mother come here to see my body? These are the devastating words I received from a friend on Manus earlier this year. This young man is the same age as me. He could be my brother, my cousin, my classmate but instead he is being robbed of the best years of his life. Instead, he is trapped within the confines of fences that deny far more than his physical freedom. Another friend said to me, Michelle, here is different. They do whatever they want and no one can protect us from them. We are very frustrated. It's really enough to our bodies suffering here. After 20 months, they come here to say that we can't help you. We can't change anything. No one here is mentally healthy. They are all sick and without hope. Every single day I receive messages like these from men interned inside Australia's onshore and offshore camps. Each day I am reminded that my government is torturing and killing innocent human beings slowly and without mercy. Each day I am reminded that this system of indefinite mandatory detention is deliberately designed to break people to inflict such horrifying cruelty that they would rather return to the genocide, torture and life-threatening circumstances from which they have fled. These camps are not processing centres. We should call them what they are. They are concentration camps. They are factories for mental illness. They are prisons in which human beings are systematically stripped of their human rights, their dignity and their hope. This policy is predicated on the idea that torture is an acceptable means to an end. Contrary to the rhetoric, deterrence or stop the boats does not mean saving lives at sea. It means go die somewhere else or we will kill you here. I speak today as the daughter of a refugee. I speak as someone who asks my friends on Manus how they are and they reply, I am still alive. I speak as a regular visitor to the Yonger Hill Detention Centre. I speak as a witness to the horrifying reality of this system. I've seen men so depressed they cannot talk. I've seen officers impose rules at whim because they have the power to do so. I've heard descriptions of assaults. I've had friends tell me they have lost all faith in humanity. And I've seen the scars of self-harm on the arms of people I care about. A year ago, my friend Sarah stood up here and spoke of our friend who has been denied refugee status despite having Taliban bullets still physically embedded in his body. One year on and still he does not know when or if he will be released. He has been in detention for over three years. We know others who have been in there for more than five. How much longer will they have to wait? If you commit a crime, you are given a sentence. You know how long you will be in prison. You can look forward to release. Asylum seekers have committed no crime. They have broken no law, yet they are forced to wait indefinitely. Even the 26,000 people in the community on bridging visas still do not have freedom. Most still do not have the right to work or study. They live in limbo with very little financial support. Indeed, some have been cut off entirely. The uncertainty remains. The threat of being hauled back into the detention or forcibly deported is imminent, and the psychological scars are deeply entrenched. People want to work. They want to rebuild their lives. But temporary protection will never permit that. Permanent protection is the only humane and just response. 
Rand's campaign against mandatory detention has been going for an excess of 10 years. I don't want to have to be standing here in another 10 years time, but to prevent that, we must act now. The grim reality is that if this policy is allowed to continue, the list of murders will grow far beyond Ahmad Ali, Reza Barati, Leo, Hamid and Omid. It is encouraging to see all of you here today. However, coming together once a year is not how we win. Currently, both major parties support mandatory detention and offshore processing. When the Abbott government is voted out, sadly the struggle will not be over. This system is the product of an agenda that capitalises on racism and xenophobia for political gain. We can only win by making this policy position untenable and indeed politically costly for any government in power. We win by building a political movement that unites the community in the call to end mandatory detention, end offshore processing and end forced deportations. So please make a commitment today. Sign up to RAN. If you're a student, join Students for Refugees. If you're a union member, join Unionists for Refugees. Talk to people in your community. Bust the myths, contact your MPs, fire at the airport, bring the refugee rights voice wherever you go, whether it's to a sporting event or to the streets. Ask yourself, what can you do to normalise opposition to these policies? The men on Manus spoke out at considerable personal risk when they were being denied drinking water, when they were being abused and beaten like dogs. We are not at risk if we speak out. Indeed, we are at risk if we don't. Asylum seekers do not need our pity, they need us to mirror the resilience and determination that they themselves demonstrate. As free citizens of the country that is systematically abusing their rights, we have a responsibility to stand up, speak out and amplify the voices that our government so ruthlessly attempts to silence. A friend of Manus once told me, the government of Australia don't know what's the mean of justice or what justice is. At present, I cannot refute this statement, but I do contend that while the Australian government does not know the meaning of justice, the Australian people do, and we will fight for it. If we are silent and we do not speak out, we have chosen to be complicit in crimes against humanity. So let's raise our voices over the rhetoric. Let's say no to racism and no to fear. Refugees are welcome here. Thank you.